Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. For the Lord, for the Lord he likes him. Show him mercy. For the Lord, for the Lord he likes him. Show him mercy. For the Lord, for the Lord he likes him. Show me mercy. Father in heaven, we thank you. Father, we thank you now for your spirit. Father, we thank you for reviving us. We thank you for touching us again. Lord, we thank you for allowing us, Lord, to defeat the enemy, Lord, that want us to sit down on your praise, that want, don't want us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Father. You're awesome, Father. Thank you for your power. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your spirit, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the Holy Ghost, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being real, Lord. Touch us now. Help us now, God. Speak words of life now, Lord. Touch us right now from the top of our heads, Lord. Lord, to the bottom of our feet. Lord, we ask you to open up our ears. And Lord, to give us understanding, Lord, what you're saying to us, oh God. And God, we need you. We need you to do it for us, oh God. We need you to place us where you want us to be. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Uh, glory. Glory. You can be seated. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Amen to God. Be glory. Amen to him. The head of my life, amen. Amen to my leader, amen. Dr. Elder L. Riley, amen. Amen to his wife, First Lady Riley. Amen to the elders, amen. Elder Ashworth and Elder Hill and their wives in their absence, amen. To all the ministers, amen. To the mother Jordan, amen. Our district missionary and our mother, amen. To my own wife, amen. To the ministers and their wives and deacons and their wives. Amen. To the sisters and brothers, to everybody, man, that's watching, to everybody that's joining in, I just want to say thank God. Amen. I just want to say thank God. God is truly good to me. You know, people always often say, you know, I need a miracle from the Lord. I need a miracle. Sometimes situations happen in our lives and we, we say we need miracles. And then I'll tell you, do you want to see a miracle? If you want to see a miracle, look at me. You're looking at a miracle. You're looking at a miracle. Come on, give the Lord a hand for, for the miracle that stand before you. Yeah, I should have been dead a long time ago. Somebody say, but God. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> I pray to the Lord and ask him, Lord, what you want me to say to, to our people, to your people. And... The Lord want me to deal with the saints today. Is that all right? Just, just to encourage the saints. Is that all right? Exhort and encourage the saints. Is that all right? Do, do we all need some encouraging? Every now and then we need encouraging, right? Sometimes we have to encourage ourselves, preacher. Sometimes we do. But the Lord give me the word to encourage today. And I just want to remind you about some things. And, uh, in Acts, the first chapter, verses 1 through 8. This is a familiar passage. Uh, in fact, when we get to that 8 verse, just about everybody in here probably can quote it. I'm going I'm to start at the fourth verse, if that's okay. Acts 1, and I'm going to read 4 through 8. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, 
Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father had put in his own power. But you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea, all Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost parts of the earth. Go over to chapter 2. and We're going to read verse 41. Chapter 2, verse 41. And it says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Somebody say 3,000 souls. <clears throat> Out of that particular passage of scripture, I'm going to use for a subject the power of of the Holy Ghost connection experience. The power of the Holy Ghost connection experience. Thanks God to give us a Rima word, a Rama word uh, today. Something that is we can use as present right now in a situation that we're going through. If y'all work with me, I don't want to be too long. Huh. Kind of focus on it, but you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the other most parts of the earth. When we think about power, the definition says the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behaviors of others. That's the noun part of power. And not only that, it's the capacity to direct a certain course of events. Now that's power. Somebody say, now that's power. When we think about connect, it means to bring together or to bring in contact as to provide access and communication. The power of the Holy Ghost connection. We've been talking a lot about power and connecting. Amen. In this season, we've been talking a lot about it. So I ask God to help us a little bit. Help me a little bit. When you talk about the Holy Ghost connection experience. Say, son, we need power. We need Holy Ghost power. Listen to this. You need power of the Holy Ghost to listen, to hear from God, to obey, and to witness for God. You need the Holy Ghost power. You need the Holy Ghost power to directly influence behaviors of others, people that are helpless, people that are hopeless, unsaved, and people that are hurting, people that are looking for real people of God. I say you need the Holy Ghost power. Come on, tell them thank you. In other words, it's like when you get the Holy Ghost and you're out there witnessing to lost souls, it's like throwing a lifeline out there to a drowning man. Tell him, grab hope, and you bring him on in. Come on, somebody say thank you. I say we need the Holy Ghost power to represent God and move about with great force to accomplish our mission. Come on, tell him thank you. To accomplish the commandments of God, to go and make disciples of men. Come on, tell him thank you. We need power of the Holy Ghost to be witnesses, 
to be observers of the faith that the Lord had given you. I said you need Holy Ghost power. Come on, tell him thank you. We need the Holy Ghost power to serve as catalysts and advocates of change. Uh, to serve as advocates of hope. As we testify and explain our profession of faith to the lost world. I say we need power of the Holy Ghost. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to win souls for love, for the Lord. The Lord said that he that when his soul is wise. We need the power of the Holy Ghost to operate within a spirit of excellence. Oh, the excellence that we talk about. We need the power of the Holy Ghost. And not only that, we need the power to continue this journey. Yes, we do. So we can follow through. So we can finish the race. Come on, tell him thank you. Jesus told us to go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized, huh, shall be saved. Oh, but it's going to be some that ain't going to believe. And for that person that don't believe, speaking damnation on himself, I said we need the Holy Ghost power. Come on, tell him thank you. When you read the books of Acts, it really tells you about the first century church. Uh-huh. It explains all the deeds and actions of the apostles and some of the other followers of Jesus for over the next 30 years following Jesus' ascension into heaven. It also details the birth of the church as well as some adjustments to traditions of the past. Come on, tell him thank you. In the first few chapters of Acts, it talks about the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. That's what we're talking about now. The Holy Ghost connection. Yes. And the gathering of all nations that was there at the celebration, at the Feast of Weeks during the day of Pentecost. Ah, uh, the Spirit descending in the Spirit. Amen. And as a rushing mighty wind, he came. They say, clovens of fire set on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Do y'all remember Brother Peter? Do y'all remember Brother Peter? You can talk back to me. Brother Peter, he was in the inner circle with Jesus. But Brother Peter had some issues. Brother, Brother Peter will fight in a minute. Not only would he fight, he would lie, he would, he would curse, and he was quick to draw his sword. You know he was. He cut off Malchus's ear, didn't he? You, you know Brother Peter I'm talking about? The one that denied the Lord three times. You know, Brother Peter, but one thing about Brother Peter, Brother Peter, the Bible say he walked on water. Oh, yeah. That Peter. And as we look at that brother Peter, the Bible tells us that when the day of Pentecost come, oh, Peter got a Holy Ghost connection. Ah, tell him thank you. The Bible say that Peter stood up and he started to preach and teach to him. Uh-huh. Tell him thank you. Peter stands and delivers one of the most powerful witnessing sermons that we can think of. It eventually leads to over 3,000 people being saved. Come on, tell him thank you. None of this is possible without the Holy Ghost connection. And if you keep on reading the book of Acts, you'll see how God just demonstrated the power of the Holy Ghost as the apostles went from city to city, healing, signs and wonders falling. Come on, tell them thank you. Do y'all remember in, the, in, in Haggai, uh, the second chapter, the word says, who has seen this house in his first glory? Y'all remember that verse? Then he asked the question, 
How do you see it now? When you look at the church, and we talk a lot about the church now. We talk a lot about what we should be doing, what we are doing. Some of us say the church is broke. I beg to differ. Jesus' church is not broke. Now, y'all church might be broke, but Jesus' church is still powerful, still creating, still saving, still touching, still delivering. Come on, tell him thank you. Uh, the latter glory shall be greater than the former. Uh, thank you, Lord. Because Peter is now connected. The Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. That's verse 47 of, of that second chapter. Now, you may ask me, what are you saying, preacher? What's your, what's your message today? In this day and time that we're living in, we need the power and the connection of the Holy Ghost within us daily. I'm going to tell him thank you. We have duties and responsibilities to be a witness to a dying world. A world that's confused. A world that's hopeless. A world that's allowing just about anything to be all right. I say we need a Holy Ghost connection. Come on, tell him thank you. We need to be able to tell that world about Jesus. And not just tell them, but show them. See, some people are visual learners. They only learn by what they see. And they read you. They may not read this, but they read you. They read your life. And sometimes you might be the only Bible that they read. I say we need a Holy Ghost connection. Come on, tell them thank you. Thank you, Lord. When I think about the Apostle Paul, his analogy of his life. He compared it to a race. Remember that? He said, I fought a good fight, kept the faith. He talked about a race. I'm ready now, he said, to be offered up. When I look at Jesus, Jesus, Jesus spoke in parables. Sometimes they understood what he was saying, but sometimes they didn't. And he would make it plain to his disciples, hey, this is what this means. This is what that means. And to you is given the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them, it's not given. Come on, tell them thank you. When I look at it today, this message, this, this particular passage, I was thinking about a game. Now, I, I, I played a lot of sports when I was growing up. And I, I often played basketball because I loved the basketball game. And I could shoot it. I could, shoot, I could score it. I was quick. But my uncles, I, I didn't have a big brother. I was the oldest boy. So I kind of hung out with my uncles that was older than me. And they would do certain things. And then certain things they wouldn't let me do with them because I was too young. But they played basketball in high school and some of them was real good but they were trained they had been coached up for certain things they had been coached up about different defenses and and diff different offenses and one three ones and three twos and all of that and I, and I didn't know nothing about that I just I was good I could shoot that ball I could handle it play a little, little defense my uncles used to get mad at me sometimes, Sister Tiffany. Because we playing whole court and I'm all out of out of out of out of I'm I ain't in my right spot. Charles, get over there. If you'd have got over there, that's a steal. You could have been and I, I just didn't know. What are you saying, preacher? When we talk about the game. Get over there on the bench. 
Go to the bench. I go to the bench. I'm mad. I'm frustrated. Because I want to be out there in the game. I'm looking at these guys. I'm saying, oh, I'm better than him. I could, I could beat them. Uncle says, sit on the bench. Sometimes in our life, God is telling us, prepare yourself. I want to get you off the bench. And I want to put you in the game. Come on, tell him thank you. Sometimes we're not prepared for whatever reason. Sometimes it's more than just a lack of knowledge. Sometimes it's just we had opportunities that we didn't take. But the Lord is saying today, get off the bench. I want you in the game. See, if you get in the game, you can make a difference. Come on, tell him thank you. If you get in the game, you could be a witness. Just for some, some reminders, and I'm going to take my seat. Saints, you were placed or you were bought, bought, brought to this earth to make a positive contribution. I said you were brought to this earth to make a positive contribution. See, God designed you to make a difference. Now. Somebody say now. Make a difference now. See, it's easy to talk about what they're not doing, what the church ain't doing, what these people supposed to be ain't doing, you know, what these preachers ain't doing, what these missionaries ain't doing, what these kids doing now. It's easy to talk about it. But God designed you to make a difference now. He's saying, get off the bench. Get in the game. Young people, you were created to serve God. Did I say that again? I said, you were created to serve God and to serve mankind. And to serve mankind. That's what we're here for. Come on, tell him thank you. And not only that, you have a special assignment from God. Every one of us does. You can only look at yourself. You can only examine yourself. You can look at somebody else, but that won't make a lot of difference. It won't make no difference. Start with you. I heard the preacher say earlier, start with them. Because God has forgiven us of our sins. We owe him our life. Can I say that again? I say because God has forgiven us of our sins. We owe him our lives. We have that blessed assurance and a secure future when we stay with the Lord. It's secure. You win. In the end, you get eternal life if you stay with the Lord. Come on, tell him thank you. Our purpose here on earth, our purpose is called ministry. And it's through ministering it will help you discover the true meaning of your life did, did, did that make sense your purpose is called ministry and it's through ministry that you'll find the true purpose of your life the true meaning of your life come on tell him thank you got a few more Everybody in here, God wants to use you. Somebody say, use me. God wants to use me. Come on, tell him. Say, God wants to use me. 
Hallelujah. He want to work through you to accomplish his will for others. Accept God's call. Accept God's purpose for your life. God has given all of us some gifts and talents. Some of us, we struggle with trying to do some things. That's because it's not your gift. And some people can do that same thing and they can just seem like they thrive, seem like they don't even work hard to do it. But it's, it, it's hard for me, Sister Shane. That's because I'm trying to operate outside of my gift. See, God gave me some gifts. And he gave you some. But it's to benefit the body. Could I say that again? It's to benefit the body. And Deacon, your gifts and talents are valuable to the body. Oh, uh, don't let the devil tell you. Oh, uh, they don't want to hear you. They don't want to listen to you. Your gifts and talents are valuable to the kingdom of God. Come on, tell them thank you. Why? Because you are unique. He made you unique. Out of all the billions of people in this land, no one has the same fingerprints. Why? Because you're unique. Come on, tell them thank you. And your purpose, which is called your ministry, it's valuable. It's very valuable. God is always with us. Remember what Jesus says? He says, Lo, I'm with you always. Mm -hmm. Even in that tough, tough time. Even in that dark place. Even when your body's acting up. When it's racking with pain. Even when you got headaches and you can't remember nothing. Come on, tell him thank you. Jesus says, I'm with you. Oh, thank you, Lord. God is saying, I want you to get off the bench and get in the game. I'm with you. See, you do what you do. And then let me do the rest. Let me determine the outcome. Let me determine what the final score is going to be. Throw up that little jumper, Mike. You got one? Throw it up there. Carmel, you got one? Throw it up there. Uh, uh, thanks. I love y'all. God bless y'all. God keep y'all. But let's get off the bench. And let's get into the game. It's a dying world out there. That need to see real people of God. Amen. Amen. As the preacher was going for it, let's get the Lord a hand praise. As the preacher was going for the Lord brought something back to my mind. I remember coming here to Powerhouse, me and my family back in, I think it was 2000, 2001. We were in the building next door. And I remember just seeing the condition of the building. And I, just something in me, preacher, to say, I refuse to live in a house that looked better than the place I worship. Because my God is greater than I am. And I remember the Lord spoke, and I don't know who this is for. The Lord just told me to tell this. The Lord spoke and said we would build a new church debt free. We would build it with no debt. And, and I hadn't, didn't know anybody that had done that before. And y'all heard me say that sometimes this, the anointing would be so high in the church over here that I would say I'm going walk on walk in the new church, walking on grass by faith. And I still remember this coming up Powell Street, 
coming around this curve. And when I came around the curve, Evangelist, I could see the top of the building. And there was just such an excitement that the Lord's house was being built. And in that moment, as I was turning that curve, the Lord said, pay your house off. We build in the Lord's house. And he said, pay your house off. And then there was a discussion that went on to Lord, I, all of my extra resources I'm putting toward making sure that the church get built dead free. But he said, pay your house off. And after that conversation, which was a short conversation, I said, Lord, where do you want me to get the resources to pay my house off? And I've always been a planter, always. Me and my family, we've always planted. He began to show me places that I had planted seeds and had forgotten about. And he would say, go back and harvest over here. Go over there and harvest over there. And I remember going in Chase Bank on 165. And when the Lord spoke that, the church money obviously went to the church money. But at my house, if I got a $14 insurance check, I put it on the dresser. If I got a $10 bonus check, I'd put it on the dresser. And after I collected them for a while, Mother, I'd go down to Chase Bank and say, put this on the principal. Now, let me tell you about my God. This is in the spring. I don't know what day it is. But I remember walking into Chase Bank on 165 to balance. We owed $90,000 on our house when the Lord spoke that. And through those grabbing those seeds and things, we got it down to $37,000. I walked into Chase Bank on 165 on Tuesday with a $20,000 check in my hand. And the Holy Ghost spoke to the teller and said, the next time you see me, I will be paying this house off. Let me tell you about my God. The preacher said something. He said, now, I walked in that same branch in that same week on Thursday with a $17,000 check. And I said, Lord, why did you, you brought back to my memory? this morning he brought that back to me and he asked me a question he said when did you pay that house off so when I went to Chase Bank and took that money he said it was paid off when I spoke my word it was done when he said when the word was spoken it was done and he said that when I speak my word I don't need you to do nothing but just line up with my word but when you line up with my words, something I feel in my spirit that God is talking to somebody. I, I sense somebody struggling with something that there's a conflict between what God has spoken to you and what your life look like right now. God has said you will be the head and not the tail, but you feel like a tail right now. God has said you will be the lender and not the bar, but you're barring right now. God has said that he's spoken that in your spirit. And all the situations and circumstances that you're dealing with right now does not line up with the word. But I stop by just to challenge you to say, I'm going to line up with the word. My circumstances will not dictate who my God is. My situation would not be dictated. My victory would not be declared based on my circumstances. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do, and I will walk in the anointing that God has placed on the inside of me. Because what I found is that when I go do that, he anointed me for this. I was born for this. And when I walk in my anointing, guess what? I get to bring some other people with me. I'm getting to the communion, but let me tell you something. When God anoints you, you sometimes you having to walk in places, you... You don't have foot 
footprints in the sand. You got to create them for somebody else to follow. About a year ago, two years ago, I got a call from a church, a Baptist church. And heard my testimony and said, we want you to come help us figure out a plan to pay our church, pay our church off. We got debt and we want to be a debt free church. God sent us in there, put a plan. And about a year later, they had a strategy. It was going to take them several years to pay off that plan. We walked back in there. COVID delayed us. Walked back in there and did our first church mortgage burning survey. Tell your neighbor, God has anointed you for this space. He, he has anointed you for this thing. And I don't care what my circumstances look like. I don't care what the enemy is whispering in my ears. God has anointed you for that space. Whatever that space is, he's anointed you to walk in it. And we're going to get to communion, but I dare you to I dare you to stand up on your feet. Because some, there's, there's something, hallelujah, about walking in your anointing. It's one thing to just talk about it, but there's something walk, about walking in. Evangelist, I just believe that when the Lord said, when the spirit was high over there and he said, go walk in the church. I just believe that when we were walking on the grass, we were walking right here. We walking on grass with no concrete pour. But the Lord says we're going to build it debt free. Hallelujah. God is speaking to some of you right now. He's telling you crazy stuff, stuff that you ain't seen before, stuff that you ain't heard nobody else testify about. He's speaking those things into your ear, and the enemy is telling you he's coming up with all kind of excuses, all kind of reasons of why it won't happen. But I dare you to just take a few steps. I'm going to walk in my anointing. I'm going to walk in my miracles. I'm going to walk in my signs. I'm going to walk in my wonders. Because God has said it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see the miracles. I mean, I see the signs. I see the wonders. I heard the enemy telling somebody that it's too late, but God said. I got to get to communion, but I was reading in God's word. When Abraham had been challenged, when God had said, you're going to have a son. Anybody remember that? When Abraham had an experience with God, And the Bible says Abraham prepared sacrifices, cut up all those sacrifices, but he didn't cut up the fowl. He didn't cut them up. He left the fowl whole. And the Bible said that the birds came. Some other version would say that the fowler came to steal it. And the Bible said Abraham ran off the bird. What you talking about, preacher? I'm saying that there's a fowler all around you trying to steal what God has already blessed you with. He's already put it in your hands. Look at those hands. Look at those blessed hands. Look at those blessed feet. I dare you to clap those blessed hands. These hands are anointed. And I'm not going to let the enemy steal it. I'm not going to let the enemy take away God. What God has blessed and the only person that can give up what God has given you is you. If you line up with his word, if you just walk in what God has said, I know it's crazy and sometimes you're out there all by yourself, but I dare you to walk in it. I double dog day, I triple dog, I quadruple dog day. Just say, I'm going to walk in it. I'm walking this thing. Give him a hand brace for what he's doing in your life. Give him a hand brace. Don't be stingy with the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be stingy with that praise. Now, if your neighbor really knew what you were going through and what you've been dealing with, that patty cake praise that you've given 
doesn't represent the struggle that you've been dealing with. That patty cake praise don't represent the fight that you're in. That patty cake praise don't represent the fight that you're in. Tell your neighbor you were born to worship. Tell your other neighbor you were born to worship. Hallelujah. You, I was born to worship. I was born to worship my creator. I was born to worship my Lord. I was born to worship the King of Kings. I was born to worship the Lord of Lords. I was born for this. Now let me give him a hand praise worthy of who he is. Hallelujah. 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 I got, I'm coming to communion, but let me just tell you. I tell people sometimes, evangelists, it's like a child learning to walk. It's a little awkward at times because it doesn't quite feel right. But you just keep walking in it. Just like that child, you just keep making, just keep making this show. Oh, I may stumble a little bit, but I'm going to keep walking this thing. Hallelujah. I rebuke teenage pregnancy. I rebuke abortions. I rebuke mental illness. I rebuke homosexuality. I rebuke all of these things. I rebuke murder. I rebuke gun battles. I rebuke all of these things that's coming up against our people. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. God created you whole. He created you healed. Hallelujah. And I'm going to walk in my healing. I'm going to walk in my deliverance. I'm going to walk in my peace. I'm going to walk in my joy. I'm going to walk in my anointing. And ain't no devil in hell going to steal it from me. Because what God has blessed can't no man, no man curse. Holler your father, we come before you right now. God, we thank you for your words that went forth this morning. This morning. God, we thank you for the anointing that you placed in this place. God, we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost. God, we thank you, God, for how you said you've been sitting on the sideline too long. It's time for you to get in the game. How do I bring my gifts? I bring my talent. God, I bring whatever you've anointed me with. And I bring them, God, to advance the kingdom of God. God, I let help me, oh God, that I decrease, oh God, so that you might increase in the name of Jesus. Increase my anointing, increase my faith, increase my power, increase my knowledge of the word, increase my trust. Open my eyes, God, that I might see you said in your word. Who has ears to hear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church? Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. God will praise you. Give him another hand for you. Now, for some of you that's got some crazy stuff before the Lord, I dare you to give him a crazy praise. 